Hello, everyone. I'm Cindy DeFilippo, and I'm Daniel Webster Council's membership uh, family um, engagement coordinator, membership person. Welcome to tonight's membership workshop, where we're going to be talking about um, the AOL to Scouts transition and how to make that smoother for not only the Scouts, but the families too. And I'm going to share my screen here. All right, let's see. It never shows me all of it here. Let's see. Sorry, it's not uh, revealing itself. There we go. Someday we'll get this Zoom thing down, won't we? <laughs> I think I say that every time. All right. So the AOLs to Scouts transition. And we always talk about partner partnering packs. And you guys, you can just yell it out. Do you guys all have a partnering pack with the troop or is your pack partnered with the troop? Yes. Yeah. Great. Josh, did you say yeah? Uh, it's Nashua, so no. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. Well, there's quite a few to choose from in Nashua so that, that at least you have some choices, right? You have some options. We have one connected with our charter, but they don't really communicate with us. And I attempt and... That's right. We mentioned that last time. But it's Nashua. We have pickings. So. Yeah, there's choices out there. Well, we have some ideas yeah. to uh, create a partnership and to build on that partnership if you have one. And I can, uh, we can talk more after too, Josh, if you'd like. Um, so if you don't already have a partnering pack or a partnering troop, if you're if you're currently a pack leader, aim to create a relationship with one that is nearby to you guys preferably, offer den chiefs to nearby packs, plan multiple pack and troop activities throughout the year. I know a lot of our units create maybe a once a year activity that gets their scouts together before they cross over. Consider doing it multiple, multiple times throughout the year to really build that relationship. Um, you wanna execute combined bring a buddy events. So maybe have a big event with fun stations or if everyone in your um, unit has an adventure card, you can actually use the mobile base camp for free and have an activities day with the mobile base camp and have each um, family in the Cub Scout pack bring a buddy and then have all your families bring a buddy or two and really promote the mobile base camp because that will get uh, non-scouting folks there really fast when they can shoot BB guns and archery and play gaga ball and all the fun stuff that it offers. Invite the AOLs and Weeblos dens to a very special event. So again, the mobile base camp is a great option. You can play kickball. You can have adults versus kids kickball or maybe AOLs versus the um, older scouts. Gaga ball, meet up at Granite Base Camp for a um, adventure day on a Saturday. And again, if you have an adventure card, you, um, you can do adventure days for free. You can host a pizza party or a barbecue, um, offer a skate night, tubing, camp out, and these can all be part of your yearly calendar. So as you sit and plan out your year of scouting in June, you know, maybe you have a skate night every year in January. Maybe your tubing is every year in February or even during February break to give an option to those folks that stay home. Um, you know, obviously most troops, they have um, campouts fairly often. I know a lot of troops even have campouts once a month throughout the whole year. Maybe every other one you have an open invite to some of those AOL scouts. This picture here is from Troop 19 um, that I had on my computer. And this is the turkey campout, which I know a lot of our troops do a, a turkey campout or a turkey dinner event. And we always invite the pack to that as well. And even past um, leaders and past 
scouts from the troop and it's just a great event to get everyone together. And it really gives you just like Thanksgiving with our families, it gives you that real family feel that you're creating this community with all your scouting family and friends. And it's a great, great event to invite um, your partnering pack. So informational nights, sounds super boring. Don't call it informational nights. I should have been more creative. <laughs> don't do that. Just like I don't like saying, oh, we're having a meeting because it just doesn't sound too fun. Have a night where you invite the parents and you maybe have a few dedicated leaders and older scouts planning some fun activities for the kids in, in, in one area. And then maybe in the corner of that room, you have the parents where you are gathering them for, um, you know, kind of a Q&A session and just kind of informing them about the troop and the types of events that you guys do and uh, what the plan is for the year, how the troop really works, right? That a lot, of, a lot of Cub Scouting families may not really know much about the patrol method or, you know, if your unit does solely uh, rely on the patrol leaders to run the events versus if you do have some of the adults, you know, run the weekly meetings and that sort of thing. Everyone kind of runs it a little bit differently, but a lot of folks may not realize that the troop meetings are mostly scout led, um, you know, create a welcome packet. And this can, you know, be a digital version as well. You don't have to print out millions of copies, but maybe you print out one flyer with a QR code to a link to your website that is like a welcome packet link or welcome new families link where you have um, scout talk videos explaining what the troop is like, um, customizable, you know, you have a welcome letters that you customize to, to match up with your unit and your content information. Uh, the fee schedule, which is um, month to month, what families, uh, what the registration is for families as they join and um, a link to downloadable applications as well, youth and adult. And all those resources I just mentioned are all available on the Membership and Marketing Hub under Leader Resources as well. So you could even create a link to that Leader Resources page if that's easier. Um, QR codes you can create for free and it takes two seconds and it's super easy. And we'd love to walk you through that. Um, just uh, you know, feel free to contact me, I can walk you through that as well. Hey, hey, Sandy. Yes. One other thing that's worthwhile giving out at, at this first meeting, or at least talking about, is volunteer opportunities. Right. Oh yes. What, Thank you what, for mentioning what, that. What is what volunteer opportunities are available in the troop for for the parents? Absolutely. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> Jeff, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I think it's so ingrained in our brains and we don't make it super obvious sometimes. It's so important as you said, to almost make it like an expected thing that you're here and everyone's going to volunteer in some capacity, right? That's what we tell them. Yep, yeah, we expect every adult to do something. Exactly, and I think that's so important because when the expectation is there and it's, and it's just like, okay, we're here, we're all gonna volunteer, you're more likely to get those families involved. And if you keep it fun, and you know, and you make the meetings, you know, interesting and fun, and always, uh, you know, include food if you can, and maybe, or maybe even just coffee and and some brownies or whatever you'd like to do, um, cookies, all that fun stuff. They they want to continue to help out. They want to continue to come because it's social for us parents too. Yep, exactly. Yep. Do you other leaders? Um, do you guys do that, or how do you handle um, adult, you know, adults coming in and getting them to volunteer? <laughs> Well, Lynn, Lynn, it's hard, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's some arm twisting sometimes, you know. Yeah, a lot, not, a lot about not saying, as easy today. No, it's not. A lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times Actually, I just say, say, you know, it's a great opportunity for you for you to spend. I, I, we have a boy troop, so spend time with your son. You know, you don't have a lot of opportunities in the next six years where you can spend several weekends or, or just be a part of what, what they're doing. And sometimes that, that will convince a parent or two sometimes. Yeah. I used to be like Jeff. Um, the first thing is hitting them up for volunteering. The second thing was I wouldn't let them out the door. 
So they had to, they had to join up for something. Mm -hmm. Um, because I literally would stick my body in the door and not let them out. <laughs> they were way too embarrassed to ask me to move over so they could leave. <laughs> oh my gosh, Donna. <laughs> so Donna. For years, I did that yep. for years. Um, and I would just say, you know, here's, I'll go over all the volunteer opportunities and then say, here's the poster and find out, sign up for something. Did yeah. they always follow through though, Donna? Huh? Did they not, follow through? Not, not everybody, no, yeah, no, but just kindly remind them that again, this is your kids, that's why you're here. And um, had to stand on top of a few of them, but overall, they did pretty well. It's actually how I used to get den leaders, too. <laughs> I used to put them together and then just say, Somebody has to be a den leader, somebody has to be a co den leader, so sign up, <laughs> yeah, and or I else. Or else your kids aren't in scouts, so it's yeah, up to or you. There, or, there will, or there will be no den, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Or there's no den, and they would usually come through. Uh, that's not as easy to do today. It's not. Hence, it, hence my 65-year-old husband is leading a, a lion's den. Right, exactly. And, and so aren't many others like that, too. Yep. Because parents, parents today will find a way to shimmy out of the room. They well, do seem and to. It's hard uh, on average, know. they do seem to, don't they? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they do. <laughs> different world, I guess. I don't. It is. It's it. totally I, a different I don't, world. I don't get it. It just seems like people don't want to volunteer. Maybe it's a generational thing. I don't know. But. I don't know. Well, I think. I think it is. I think the generation we have and coming up is going to be really tough. Well, scouting for the longest time, people were expected to be almost like a babysitting type of field so my saying i always say i am not a babysitter if you want a babysitter i'll charge you babysitter char um, pricing because that's a lot more expensive <laughs> nowadays compared to what the scout program has to offer and uh now i'll be blunt about it you know uh, I'm, I'm not here to babysit your kid i love 50 percent of your help you know if you can show up to one event that's great if you don't, you don't have to show up to the next rotate it that way they're not overwhelmed and it helps at the Cub Scout level, at least, distinguish, you know, hold, hand holding. You know, the kids can be a little bit more independent because we all know, even at the troop level, the kids, boy or girl, act differently when their parents are around. Well, for sure. Um, that is true. And like you said about rotating, Josh, that's a good idea. You know, maybe someone can't be a den leader every week, or maybe, you know, maybe they can't come, maybe an ASM can't come to every meeting but you can rotate responsibilities. And I think that's something to keep in mind. I think if folks can keep an open mind about, you know, um, about what volunteering looks like, because I think there's a few things I think, I think one, you know, volunteerism across the board is way down as we all know. Number two, we are, we are just knock on wood coming out of a pandemic where people are burnt out to the nth degree. Um, and it's just mental exhaustion, physical exhaustion. And you guys know we're all going through it. I think, I th and I think a lot of people got used to staying home and not doing much too. And it's hard to get back into the habit of being busy. Um, and, you know, and that's another struggle too. So maybe approaching it like, you know, um, oh, hey, you know, I heard that, um, you know, you're really, you love to do carpentry in your free time. Do you think you could lead the Grin and Barrett achievement and help the kids, you know, build a few games or, um, or construct a wooden mini derby track, you know, for that achievement and then approach another parent that, you know, maybe enjoys, you know, something else that relates to one of, one of the advancements and see if they can help lead that one and, and really rotate that way. Maybe, maybe all the parents and your, um, in your dens, you know, are registered leaders and, and it's just something that you make happen and well, not you make happen, but everyone makes happen. And, and then you rotate, you know, each week. The other thing I've, I've heard others do what we never, I never had to do this in the packs that I was involved with years ago, but if you can't find a parent that will be a den leader because they just don't know what it means, right? And they're worried, overwhelmed, mm -hmm. concerned that I don't know how to do this. I, I'm not going to volunteer for something that I know nothing about. Mm. I know that 
Cub Masters in the past have said, okay, how about I'll do it with you for a while. Yeah. And then once they realize that being a den leader is really not that overwhelming a job, you know, it's not that big a deal. And then they kind of move into it and take it over. If you can find someone to kind of co-lead it with, with somebody experienced, whether that's a Cub Master or somebody who's done it before or whatever, um, then, then, you know, you can hook them in that way. That is they very, don't feel yeah. completely you know, terrified at first. Yeah. I think that's part of it too. Yeah, I, that's I, true. I, that works well, um, Cub Master wise, for a while. And uh, just like everyone, everyone moves up with their kids. So you always have those fresh parents. For me, when I, uh, being the Cub Master at the time, I could easily just say, hey, for the next two months, maybe three, I'm going to be the den leader. I want you guys to watch because I'm, I'm just going to work on the Bobcat section. It's the easiest thing to do. Watch how, you know, you can interact with the kids and it gets the parents to kind of sit back, maybe join in, you know, but, you know, you only have a handful of meetings the first two, three months and you're just working on the stuff in the back of the book, <laughs> you know, right. the, back cover. the Bobcat stuff is the basic stuff. It doesn't matter which age. And you can do them all at the same time. Lions, tigers, wolves, you know, yeah. all of them at the same time. All right, we're all going to get together. This, at the pack level, they all need to earn Bobcat first, no matter what rank you're at. So it's easier to show all the parents those first two months. And ho hopefully you, sh you show them how much fun you can have doing it. Um, I found that works, but pandemic made it even harder with the families nowadays. It certainly did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say in our pack right now, um, our Lions kids all have siblings that are wolf age kids. So they're actually meeting at the same time. Their meeting is in the same space, but, um, and they, they do separate things, but then they do things together because a lot of things do intersect. Yeah. And that's kind of worked out. Unfortunately, <laughs> nobody from the Lions group parents has, has, ganged on and say oh this isn't so bad I could do this <laughs> so I think my husband is on the hook for a while so. and I, I've told my parents all the time lions and the tigers is the best time to be the den leaders because mm. all the best is having yes, fun yes it and is the, all you have to do is attend things and you pretty much knock everything out <laughs> yeah, and give them and give them lots of things to color it's just you know the, the <laughs> right. I, I yeah them, he used to say it's the easiest two things to do just you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mark, seriously mark, folks if you can't do those you're not going to make it anywhere <laughs> yeah. mark, i think mark's last den leading leader thing they played some games they made trail mix together he brought all the mm -hmm. things together so they love that and they colored lots of things so they all had a blast <laughs> I, I've had parents That's come so up fun. joining as lions and they'll say, you know, what, what are the requirements? I'm like, have you ever seen one of those restaurants that have the papers for the kids and they have to draw and doodle? <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's the same idea. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, show up to the pack meeting, show up to 80% of the pack outings at like Pinewood Derby, this and that. It's easy. Yep. Well, Two it's like, yeah. If you it's open the, the book, you can do it in a week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah the troop level is a little different sometimes. Yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. troop level, it comes to the point with the ALs going over, like Jeff was saying, you know, and Sydney about asking, you know, and trying to convince them. Me, I don't, I don't like doing it on the first one. I like doing it on the second one because I like giving those survey sheets. Yeah. You know, the, you know say, hey, what kind what of they're good at. Yeah. And yep. then, then you can look it over with the key three because it's really the committee chair's job to really get those volunteers say, hey, this person might be good for this role. So the right. next meeting, these are the roles that we want. Hey, I think you might be good for it. Because um, if you call them out on it, you have well, a higher chance of getting one. Literally, um, the only way it works at the Boy Scout level is you have to tap. I, I always say, you got to tap them on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. You yep. pick the person and say, can you do this as opposed to standing up at, you know, at the court of honor and saying, here's the, here's the help I need. Yeah. That never does anything. Um, yeah. Face to face but always quick, works better. Quick aside, speaking of people volunteering and not mm -hmm. going to realize how much work it is. I just stepped down as a scoutmaster of my troop about three really? weeks ago because Stan Graziano said he wanted to do it. Oh, and wow. I, was, I was like, tag, you're it. I mean, myself. How, so. how long were you in that position? About five years. Long enough. Wow. So Stan, Stan actually called me and was asking me some questions a couple of weeks ago. And he said, boy, 
so much for having any free time in your life when you're a scoutmaster, huh? And yeah. I said, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you're learning. <laughs> Thinking about it all the time. But there are some, I mean, let's face it, there are so many other things that are, you know, if you're not the key three, the rest of it can be a lot less work, obviously. Yeah. Um, and those parents that are looking to volunteer, but they don't want to take a huge role, like, hey, you know, you got some simple ones. I know you got the assistant scoutmaster part, you know, and that can be kind of a vague position. It is, some of them, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, fund, helping with fundraising, that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. Um, you do one yeah. fundraiser. You know, we have two or three fundraisers a year. A different person runs each one. Yep. I, I'm trying to convince a couple of units I recently attended. They said, yeah, we have some ASMs, but, you know, they kind of come to the meetings and they're standing around. I'm like, tell them there's a round table every month. Send him that. That's his only job is to grab the stuff from round table and go to your committee yep. meetings. Um doing merit badge counselors i'm sure we can use more of those mm -hmm. uh, yeah well, i mean we have we have one assistant scout master that is a well we they now because i put a lot of stuff in place because i simply couldn't do everything anymore you know we have one that's a first class advancement coordinator we have one that's a starting eagle coordinator we have one that's an equipment manager those are probably the three and then one that runs what well, we did he left and then one to run the camping program so we have four very specific assistant scoutmaster jobs. Mm -hmm. we don't, they don't have four right now, but when we did, you know, and then that, and then that, and honest, quite honestly, that makes it a heck of a lot easier for the scoutmaster, right? Because what I told them and I told my committee is, I want to concentrate on the the, the leadership development for the boys and nothing else, because mm -hmm. I felt like that was my job, right? And it does. It takes a, you know, it takes a lot of, and and it really took defining the specific jobs. And then, as I said, tapping someone on the shoulder and said, here's the job description. Will you please do this for me? And it worked. It actually worked pretty well. It took a while, but it worked. Well, you're one of the lucky ones. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't easy. It took me about a year. But, you know, doing it for five years, it, you know, that's a really good number. You know, there's yeah. some out there that they're still doing it and it's been their kids are growing out and all that type of stuff. Um, but they're still going 10, 15 years. Like uh, it's time to get somebody fresh and new. I think it is too. I'm not sure it's really a good thing for these people that are, you know, scout master, decide to be a scout master for 25 years. Things have got to be get things have got to get stale after a while. Yeah. You, and let's you, face it, the scouts of 25 years ago are not the scouts of today either. You know. Yeah, it's true, and that, that's why it's good to, you know, have a variety of assistant scout masters too, if if you can, and like and like I said, Jeff specific roles sometimes works really well because then people know what's expected and they just have that kind of one little specialty yep. to worry about which is nice we, we do that too in our troop um we have asms that each have like specific roles um and um and then we have two other asms that have been planning like a lot of activities some for the younger scouts some for the older ones and they're <laughs> they basically do just the activities which is great too so you can really divide the work you know i think i think a lot of us are set on well like this is the den leader and this is what it looks like and this is the assistant den leader but maybe you know you think about recruiting a team of people or a variety of people that can take on the one role in different ways and it's just kind of you know different ways of thinking to kind of take the pressure off of one person um, absolutely yeah you're absolutely right and I like think, i said that that I, I i have to admit a couple of years ago i did have to threaten to quit to get people to step up and do all this stuff i just told them uh -huh. i wouldn't do it I, I just basically told them i would not do it all anymore mm -hmm. it is tough because, because you guys know it always you know a lot of these responsibilities fall on the same people all the time and if you keep and doing so, it nobody will step up right if you step right? back like you said jeff yep sometimes you have to step back a little bit and and or like you said, Jeff, too, and, and Josh, you were saying, you know, um, being a mentor, you know, to these leaders and saying, hey, I'm willing to stay on for another year, but I really think it would you would be great at this. Do you want to shadow me for a year, year and a half? See if you like it. See what you think. That way you get some training while I'm still here. And then, you know, and then that way when, you know, I move on, then there's somebody that knows the role. And I well, think the funny thing is, is, that's how the conversation started with our new scout masters. I, I said to him one day, I really wish that some kid would, I hope some kid joins in the next couple of years whose parent wants to become the scout master so I can train them. And his answer was, oh, really? I'd love to do it. 
Oh my gosh! Wow. I was kind of shocked. That well, is you know, great. He's wood bed. He's also wood badge trained too. You go to wood badge, and it kind of changes you a little bit. You know, you want you want to apply all that stuff. Definitely. Right? And I think that's why he wants to do it, which is great. You know, it's all good. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, well, those are all great ideas, and definitely feel free to jump in, you guys, as you have them, because I I know I love hearing from other people. I don't like listening to my own voice as much as it may seem I do. <laughs> I really don't. Um, so with that welcome packet, going back to this little tidbit here, make sure you include all your contact inf information so they can get in touch with you. Pictures, uh, we, we did this one time and I've seen other units do this where they have like a flyer with little headshots of each leader and underneath it has their name and their role in the unit. And I just think that's important because I know like, think about when, when you guys first walked in to your first pack meeting or your first troop meeting and you're like, who are these people in the brown shirts? What does that person do? Who do I talk to about my application? Who do I talk to about, you know, uh, the camp out coming up, right? It's it's very overwhelming. And especially in a troop, you have all these brown sh tan shirts everywhere, right? Um, so um, I think a little, you know, um, a little sheet with that information is really helpful to new parents. And then your calendar of events, you know, when you're planning out your year of scouting in June, hopefully you guys plan out a year or so. Um, every year, you know, have that calendar events uh, printed out, or like I said, make it part of your digital welcome packet as well, and fundraising information, because just like volunteering, you want to make fundraising an expected um, activity. It's expected for every family to be involved in fundraising, whether they, you know, fundraise themselves, they volunteer to help, Whatever, whatever aspect of fundraising, but it should be an expectation that every family takes part. Some, you know, events that you can team up on. I mean, community service, right? Scouting is all about serving our community and a great, um, you know, way to introduce the younger kids into what our older kids are doing is our, the community service that we perform. So maybe you invite your local PACs to combine efforts with scouting for food. Offer a fall and spring cleanup for your chart organization and invite PAC families to help out. Or plan a totally separate service project with your partnering PAC and, and maybe have the older kids work with the younger kids to generate their own ideas. And this really helps with those leadership skills and kind of taking ownership of something they'd like to do to help, you know, improve their community as well. At the meetings, so um, I thought this stock photo was... <laughs> it spoke to me. Um, new member coordinator is so important. And I know we were talking about getting those volunteers is tricky, but a new member coordinator is, is really one of those, other than your key three, really someone that you should have in place. This person should be really outgoing, a people person, and someone who really knows a lot about the scouting program. And um, they not only help with just recruiting and retaining your scouts, but really should be a greeter for the new families. So as families come in, you know, they're saying hello, they're introducing themselves, they're kind of giving the new families the lay of the land, pointing them in the direction they should go, all that fun stuff. And really just making them feel welcome, really, and making sure that these families feel like they have a friend in that unit where, where they're at. So um, be sure that, you know, when you are, when you are having these meetings with uh, when you know new families are coming, especially, make sure your entire committee and all the leaders are present at those meetings. Wear visible name tags. I'm still a name tag fan. It's always, you know, it's tough when you go up to someone and you're like, you know, I, I know we can introduce each other, but sometimes seeing and saying the name really helps it resonate a little bit more. Um, the welcome name tags, uh, there's like special welcome scout name tags that you can download from the hub under the new member coordinator link. It's under leader resources. Um, you can and set up a welcome table with a few volunteers as well who are really knowledgeable about the troop or I mean, even if you're trying to recruit for your pack, you know, someone who's really knowledgeable about how everything works, who all the leaders are. Um, that way as families come up and ask questions, there's a friendly face um, to provide those answers. So, um, you know, getting into the details here, 
some helpful things for new families is maybe in the first few weeks have den chiefs to those to those packs act as um, patrol leaders for those new crossovers, right? Because these den chiefs are familiar faces to the to these kids. And a lot of times the den chiefs aren't way older than the younger kids. So it's not as intimidating for these, um, you know, I, I know we just had a bunch of ALWs cross over and I'm like, they're so little. And we forget like these, these are little kids and they're walking in and there's all these big kids and a lot of adults walking around. It's really intimidating. So, um, you know, really give those den chiefs a chance to really shine in their leadership role and act as patrol leaders for the first few weeks for those new crossovers. Plus, it gives those crossovers a chance to all be in that den together, just like how they just, I'm not den, they're patrol together, just like how they came from their den together. So it just is a slow introduction to the troop and you can slowly separate them as they get more comfortable. Be sure to plan out fun games and team building activities each week. I think we often really focus, especially at the troop level, on advancement and on camping skills and and you know um, you know all those specific skills each week that um, all of our kids love to do. But make sure you are really building in a fun game at the beginning or the end of those meetings, so that way it gives a chance for those kids to get to know the other kids a lot better in a real comfortable. Um, more casual environment. Ask the ALLs what they like to see at the meetings. You know, maybe you have like an open meeting where it's kind of a Q and A, and at the same time you ask them like what they're looking forward to in the troop, right? You know, some of the things that they might want to see or do. Have scout scout rank and tenderfoot ranks walk the new scouts through the actual order of the meeting and advancement process. I feel like a lot of AOLs gets, get all stuck and caught up on this because remember they're going from a pack where their parents and their den leaders are super, super involved. And the advancement is all dependent on what the adult leaders do, right? Not so much, I know as AOLs, they start to get a little bit more independent, but you walk into a troop meeting and suddenly you're responsible for you know, getting advancements signed off you know, making sure you show up and you talk to the right person. And the troop, a lot of the troop meetings are run completely different from pack meetings. So maybe create a buddy system where you have an older scout with those crossovers. And maybe for the next, you know, the first few weeks, they're walking through, okay, when you come into the meeting, you, you know, write out your name on the attendance sheet. Then we go over to the patrol and we do this. And then when you complete this advancement, you go over here to, you know, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, and they sign you off here and really have that buddy system where you're really taking them through those steps so they can really feel comfortable the first few weeks that they're there. Have an ASM and an assistant scoutmaster assigned just to those crossovers. Like you were saying, Jeff, sometimes specific roles are really useful. And in this case, it's great to have an ASM or two assigned to these young kids, right? Um, most AOLs, like we said earlier, have a hard time adjusting, you know, taking that initiative to sign off on their advancements. So have this ASM pay super close attention to those um, crossovers and, and be sure that they, you know, know the advancement process and that they are getting the support they need to do that. Would you agree with that, Jeff? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Awesome. For sure, because they really don't understand the whole advance we I actually we used to spend like a meeting talking with we would take the, the new scouts aside with their parents and explain the whole advancement process to them and how it all worked and the fact that you're right as time went on you are responsible for your advancement not us right whereas when you're cub scouts the parents were pretty much responsible for the advancement right you did it with them but we explained to them that um but what we tell the scouts is and, and this is the way i always felt is Tender, well, scout, tenderfoot, second class, first class, it is the responsibility of both the scout, the older scouts, and even the, and even the adults to help the kids get the first class. Mm -hmm. After that, they get the first class. Now, we pretty much tell them, now it's entirely on you. This yeah. is your responsibility to get from first class to eagle is your responsibility and only your responsibility and nobody else's. And they're that much older at that point. So they have that right. maturity where they're able to, and you know, we hopefully, can only hope. you know, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we can only hope. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's that's all great stuff for sure. Yeah, because you do want to teach the independence too. But I think we all forget that, you know, you do have to start off with baby steps a little bit and kind of make sure everyone's comfortable because we do lose a lot of crossovers. And a lot of times, you know, maybe it's because they just don't feel like they're a part of the group. Maybe the new scout just kind of got lost and they weren't sure how to advance or really where that was going. So um, that's the, definitely, yeah, that, that is the biggest reason why you lose or scouts early, right? I mean, the, the 16 year olds, we all know why we lose them. That's a whole different story. Right? <laughs> yes. That's, that's, the, that's the, that's the fumes as I like to call it, right? The car exactly. Fumes, the, the fumes say like, car fumes. like cars and girls or guys, are you right? Cars, like cars yeah, and... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly. Cars and couples, I guess we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's one of them. Yep, the perf I, we say, well, we, you, we, I guess you can't say it anymore, but it used to be the perfumes or the car fumes, but it's not. Oh, right. I don't know. Uh, we have, now we have all the kids. <laughs> right. But, but the, yeah, the, uh, the younger kids and more often than not, the reason I've seen kids leave is because they get really far behind in advancement. Yeah. Right. And they, and they get, um, they get just very discouraged. Well, especially if every meeting is solely focused on advancement too. That does yeah. get discouraging because they get kind of lost and maybe you have, you know, a meeting here and there or every other meeting where it's fun, right? Because these kids go because they want to have fun and, and that. Oh, they better be fun. The yeah. Advancement should be fun too, but yeah, definitely. yeah. Um, it's, and, and it, you know, you get a, a 14 year old that's working with the 11 year olds on second class requirements. Right. Uh, and, and the older kids are doing much more, you know, fun stuff. They just, they get very discouraged and they leave. That's true. We gotta keep them excited and it's, and, and motivated to move up, right? Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. That is true. As we try. That is true. Um, it says welcome back activities, but basically welcome activities that we can do. And we talked about a few of these before. You know, in the winter months, ice fishing, ice skating, uh, roller skating night, like we said before, building that in maybe every year. And every year you invite your local packs to that. A bowling night, kids love the bowling and pizza. You can do a movie night. Um, maybe you host a fishing derby, an outlaw, you know, Pinewood um, derby, a rain gutter, regatta. You know, remember just because we have older kids in the troops, it doesn't mean that they don't still love doing this stuff, right? So uh, they might probably like it even more that they're older, they can create super cool cars and super cool boats, right? <laughs> and then maybe just do a Gaga Ball tourney, which is super um, fun too. I know Gaga Ball is all the rage right now. Um, but, you know, all those activities are, um, you know, just ideas to build into your calendar. And you can do every other big activity where you invite the packs, or maybe once a month you have an activity where you invite all, all the packs as well. It doesn't have to be just once a year and it shouldn't be just once a year. You wanna really develop that relationship. Um, these are just some friendly reminders. We have a camp director's chats coming up. They all begin at 7 p.m. The next one is February 27th. Um, is Drew running the camp this summer, by the way? Rudlewski, do you know? Um, I'm trying to think if Drew is back. Um, I'm not sure exactly who is where. We did some rearranging okay um so i'm not sure quite yet who's running what yet um there's been um i know that there is they're in the middle of sorting that you know who's gonna go where okay. <laughs> All right. <Fair> enough. <laughs> um this is camp director's chat sorry i forgot to delete that this is actually um some membership uh save the dates the next workshop is march 24th at 7 p.m and that's the one I was talking to you guys about earlier that we are gonna be announcing the membership plan for 2022, which all has really specific action items and a lot of really awesome events that we'll be hosting at Granite Base Camp and at Camp Carpenter. So um, definitely join us for that. And we have some incentives and um, other cool things to announce. May 20th, speaking of cool events, is our Granite Base Camp membership kickoff in-person event. Uh, where we'll have leader recognition, um, all the news about membership and resources and, and new incentives, um, some Granite Base Camp information and an actual tour of Granite Base Camp so our leaders can really get to know what we offer there. And of course, some food and lots of fun. We'll actually get to 
um, participate in some of the Granite Base Camp activities as adults. So that would be super fun. Um, June 18th is our Fishing for Adventure event at Camp Carpenter. This is for all units. Cubs will work towards fishing um, advancement achievements and Scouts BSA will check off some of their fishing merit badge steps as well. Um, this happens to be National Fishing Day, so it's perfect. And we will recognize units who have reached their spring recruiting goals and those who have achieved the President's Membership Challenge. So that's gonna be a really fun event for everybody. And then resources, of course, here's a um, QR code to the Membership and Marketing Hub. Uh, leader resources page as everything there. And if you don't see something there that you think should be there, definitely let me know. And I often use the resources on the side here. Sign Up Genius is great for getting people involved in events or activities. Um, Cognito forums are a great way to collect information and track information as well. Grammarly, if, um, if grammar is a struggle, like sometimes that is for me too. Poster My Wall and Canva are great, great programs that are free to create uh, invites, flyers, um, even animated images, things like that for um, your units, activities, recruiting events, Ooh. all that fun stuff. Great stuff. They have stuff, flyers, social media, whatever size that you need, they offer it on those programs as well, which is great. I know I've kind of flew through the last couple of slides, but um, would love to hear if you guys have any comments or questions. No? I left uh, you speechless. <laughs> well, I guess so. I like to ask Jeff. Uh, Jeff, as a scoutmaster for the last five years, retaining the youth is one thing, but retaining the older ones, you said uh, you know, around that 16 years of age. Yeah. Do you, do you find that it's due to the age or that they are so your unit or other units might be in the same boat they're so focused on the younger ones and themselves so they don't feel like they're getting as much out of the program just curious if yeah that's a good that that's a really good question um so i'm trying to think of, of the, the kids that we've lost in our troop which which fortunately for us has not been a ton of them um and more often than not, it's it's one of two reasons. It's either, as I was saying before, they're not advancing enough, or for a while, um, I felt like things were kind of stale in our troop when I took over. We're doing the same events every year, same campouts, same places, same events, same everything. Plus, the adults were leading the troop, which I think was which was a big part of the problem too. But um, so, giving those number one, giving those older kids more responsibility and leadership positions and letting them actually run the troop helped um they, they wanted to stick around making sure there was advancing certainly helped and letting them pick the activities they wanted to do right so they did some some kind of new and different things and it didn't get so stale for them because you know we're going to camp we're going to the hidden valley in march to do an advancement camp out again mm -hmm. right every year and so getting some some new stuff to do was a good way to keep the older kids around keep to keep them engaged and having fun and really letting them run things i mean the, again the, the more often than not the kids that left for the kids that just weren't advancing very much they just weren't didn't seem interested in advancing and and you can see you know you can kind of see it that they're, they're just they get frustrated and maybe again maybe we devote you know an assistant scout master to the older kids you we know, do. And, and so, yeah. 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 You know, there, there used to be a thing in scouting when I was a kid, and I don't know why they got rid of it because I thought it was a great idea when I was a scout. And it was a concept of something called the leadership core. And it was basically a way for the older kids in the troop to be able to go off. It was to do stuff by themselves. Mm -hmm. It was almost, it was, it was really, and I think this is a reason maybe they got rid of it. it was, we were kind of a separate patrol. It was the senior patrol leader, the assistant patrol leaders, the scribe, the quartermaster, all the older kids that had the you know more responsible positions weren't necessarily members of a PLC, if that even existed when I was a kid. I'm not sure it did. Um, but we had this leadership core, and we went off and did different stuff, you know, older kid campouts, because 
that's the other thing is sometimes 15, 16, 17 year olds, they don't want to go camping. They don't want to spend a weekend, every single one with 11 and 12 year olds for obvious reasons that I don't have to go into with anyone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Um, And so while there's maybe not that that official leadership core thing doesn't exist anymore, no reason you can't do it unofficially, yep. right? And you, and and, yep. and have a camp out for just some of the older kids or an event yeah. for some of the older kids. Yeah, our our troop when it was a little bit larger, it's not so large anymore. Mm, neither we of do, ours. Yeah, we do like at least two, sometimes three. Um, old older boy thing, not based mm-hmm. on even rank, just you know like the fourteen and ups, and it could be just a day canoeing. I know. Mm-hmm. I remember. I remember one doing canoeing the Nashua River, and and those guys just had a blast, you know. And I think that kind of helped because they they felt like baby like we sometimes feel like babysitters as leaders. They felt yep. like babysitters as leaders. They do. On, yep. I was I, I was going to say yep. the same thing, Lynn. Right? Yeah. They feel if if they're doing their job well, they feel a certain responsibility to take care of right. those younger kids and teach them and bring them along. And sometimes they just don't want to do it. Yeah, you know, they just they just, just like, want to have fun. Yeah, just like we don't always want to do it. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it, I don't I don't even think it has to be a. It, but it's challenging if you don't have enough adult leader support to support a older boy program like it, that. It, yeah, that's true. Yep. And I mean, sometimes we do adult things by ourselves. We haven't done it. We didn't do it very often. But you know, every now and then I invite the assistant scoutmasters and the and committee members if they wanted to sit by the fire pit in my backyard without yep. uniforms, you know, and, and adult beverages, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, you know, that keeps you, that keeps the adults in, engaged too, right? Because yeah. you're right, sometimes, you know, I don't know if other districts do it, but our historic district now does these adult leader musters pretty regularly where we just get together and hang out. It's totally yeah, it's, related. It's, it's, it's good fellowship. Fellowship is important. Yeah. Yeah, and doing that with the older scouts is a good thing to yeah. do too. It keeps, yep. can help keep, can help keep them around. That's true. Yeah. We have the same issue now too, Lynn. My my troop was almost 40, mm-hmm. 40 scouts when I first joined, and I think there's twelve kids in Troop Nine right now. So uh, we're very similar. We yeah. we were we were like thirty five to forty, um, and we have thirteen right now. Yep. But you know that's that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. That's why I decided to take on this membership role because I think it's important. And yeah. Yeah really starts at the Cub Scout level anyway, right? Yeah. Cindy, well, I, I don't, it does, yeah. That's yeah. 99% yeah. I, of it is Cub Scout yeah. level. Yeah, I'm still participating on the troop level and now we're on the Cub level too for the very same reason. I live in Brookline, so we have one feeder feeder pack and uh, it was really struggling through COVID. Ours did too. Yeah, and we're the same way in Atkinson. We had one pack and it yeah. really struggled yeah. for a long time. It's doing much yeah. better now though. Yeah, okay. we are too. I think we are kids. too. Yeah. I think we are too. So hopefully we're, we've, we're resurrecting it. We'll see. Right, Donna? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll come back. Everything takes time. And I think yep. we're, I think everyone's moving in the right direction. Everyone's, you know. It does, it does seem like it doesn't, but this year things mm-hmm. are moving in the yep. right direction because I think because the kids can get together again. I think they want to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think people are excited to get back to normal and whatever that is. And, whatever normal um, is the new normal. Yeah, exactly. The new normal. <laughs> and and um, yeah, I mean, everything seems helped. to, what's that? I think the pandemic kind of helped with some of the ones that continued and stayed. Um, yeah. Between my son and a couple of them that went to a couple other units, we still see them. Last summer, all the way up to now, they had birthdays all over the place, um, different times of the year. They did not want presents. They just wanted to hang out with their friends. Mm-hmm. Um, four out of six of them decided to do campouts all summer long, not scout related, just going out camping with their scout buddies as just friends. That's they great. Presents. They just wanted to hang out. And when I when I'm hearing them say that, because my son did that um, on Labor Day, because his birthday's Labor Day, <laughs> um, we took two two nights. You know, and we just had a couple of them that he bridged, you know, from AOL and do the uh, troop level stuff. You know, um, two of them went to one troop and two went to another and we, hey, we're doing a party. They just did the same thing. They just want to hang out with friends. They don't want any presents. Yeah. I don't they know. To, and they want to go and do it out in the woods too. That's yeah. even better. 
Uh, I said, well, hopefully that, hopefully that never wears off because on my 60th birthday, I went hiking. Mm. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I wish that was the easiest That's thing I did. <laughs> uh, mine was, I was, I was gone for three weeks on mine. But uh, yeah, I, I'm finding, uh, so in the past three weeks, I've been up and down the state of New Hampshire. I visited, um, I want to say eight different troops and all, at least one in every district. Uh, just popped in. You know, I got to say hi. Some, some adults I've known. Uh, my youngest is in a, uh, AOL this year. Uh, well, well, he'll be bridging next February. So we just visited Troop 15 uh, B out of Merrimack. They did a lock in movie night, Spider-Man movies. The older ones, the Tobey Maguire ones. Uh, of course, my son loves that. And a couple of his kids in his AOL den loves those too. So they went and attended. They had a, a great amount of fun. You know, they did board games. They cooked breakfast. They had a bunch of snacks. Everyone brought snacks. They had a great time. The one, and they had to postpone it once because the last snowstorm that came through. So they had it just recent, um, two Saturdays ago. So it kind of worked out. But they lost a bunch of the older scouts to attend. So all we had was two other packs there which includes mine with a bunch of young kids and one adult or well, one older scout hmm. he did a very good job holding it and the one thing i realized um just being back behind the scenes is watching and there's only two other adult leaders from that troop i went up afterwards and say hey you did an awesome job controlling these guys you did an amazing um being able to control them keep them reined in for what you're doing being with kids that are under 11. And when I mentioned stuff like that, I noticed that, you know, he's been with the troop for like two, three years. And it almost seemed like he never got appreciated. Mm -hmm. A little bit of effort. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that with even the, between the younger ones and the older ones, but at, even at the Cub Scout level, I find the same thing. I will, if I see an amazing something like he behaved very well, I will get down on my one knee say, with the parents say, you were amazing what you just did. I'm glad you helped stay cleaned up. You helped the lion out, you know, his first meeting he came to. You helped him, his power derby broke. You helped him out. At the troop level, it's the same thing. And, I, and I'm finding that even though they go to troop meetings or they go to those camp outs, if you don't acknowledge that they did something, not that they have to, well, mm -hmm. you got it signed off. It's kind of like, well, you work for eight hours. I don't have to say thank you. You got a paycheck. We still want to be appreciated saying a thank you or yep. amazing high five type of thing. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are. We all want that. And I've, I've been finding as I'm doing it more and more with the pack, I started attempting to do it with the troops that we've been visiting and I get a better response. And I don't know if that's been helping because I went back um, a, a week later and I saw that scout step up even more. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, it, it was just something that I'm yep. seeing out of the, unit the troops that i visited last three weeks all had the same problem none of the adults or even the oldest senior patrol leaders um or senior patrol leader himself are not really acknowledging and thanking their own guys for doing yeah. what they're doing. you know they yeah. do a, once a year at a court of honor or a couple times out of the year uh, yeah, say good job at the end of the meeting you'd be surprised just saying that good job or thank you for your support and all that help coming from your senior patrol leader at the troop level goes a lot more yep. distance. Oh, so yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna share a story. I sat on the Eagle board last night and one of the candidates had in his letter, which is one of the requirements, uh, wrote about how he feels that it's really important to pay attention to uh, those scouts or kids that are not, not being paid attention to. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I think he felt like he was one of those scouts, yeah. and he admitted to some mental health anxiety issues that he personally oh. um, had was suffering from. And I just thought that spoke so much towards his character. Mm -hmm. And sure I, I think what, I think what you're saying, Josh, is true. I think um, they're Back recognizing the recognizing those kids in the background that that are not necessarily the senior patrol leader, but are just like doing things quietly. It's really important. Uh, I believe this kid, he was the troop guide. 
um, mm -hmm. at one of the uh, units. And I gotta say, he did an amazing job handling brand new AOLs that were just coming in um, two That's meetings great. in a row. And it, basically it was just up to him handling six kids that are, you know, 11. Yep. Right. <laughs> But it's, again, hurting, all, it's like hurting chickens. <laughs> yeah, it goes a lot further than people expect, you know, showing that appreciation. And it, with the older ones, if you're demonstrating that at the adult level, showing the senior patrol leaders, hopefully it trickles down. That's what we're also trying to bring into the community. How often do you go to work? Do you ever really get appreciated at work? You know, say, hey, I stayed an extra three hours to, you know, finish this job because it was a big deal. You ever get that? You know, how many of us really yeah. get the thank you? You know, I know they don't have to because you get a piece though, you know, by the end, it's you, part, the part of the reason I, off. it's part of the reason I told my boss this evening that I'm retiring in a month. Ah, oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. You. Nice. Part oh, of it is just you know, not feeling is, a, you know, you're right. I get a very good paycheck. I can't complain about that, but had enough of not really feeling terribly appreciated for what I do. So. Yep. But it, it's the value of the individual. And if you don't have the well, individual. Cindy's going to give me 10 times as much work. Yep. Like, oh, he's retiring. Hmm. Bob, I will have more free I will have more time. That's great. Milk, I was so excited. I'm milk yeah. that I that month. Um, but yeah, I, so for Linda and um, Jeff, I know Cindy and Donna know. So I, me and my son, we're alone skills. So we mm -hmm. are a unit of one. So we have the opportunity in part of the program that I'm doing along with my son. We actually travel in and out of different states all the time. But this past month, we traveled up and down the New Hampshire um, class six road and stuff, but we stayed in different towns. And while we're there, you know, because thank God for the internet, I can search for units nearby and see, hey, what's events going on? So I get to go to a couple of units every once in a while. And it's the same thing. Everyone seems to be going through the same problem, trying to retain mm -hmm. youth, trying to get those volunteers tapping on the shoulders as much as possible, mm -hmm. you know, um, so do you always travel like that, Josh? What do you do? Um, I own a gaming company. So oh. I, basically, um, I set up expos, comic cons, tournaments, oh. leagues. Um, oh, cool! Oh, so fun! That sounds no, like I'm fun. Not, I'm not that person that drives around on a giant trailer with all the video games set up. For, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm one that sets up like San Diego Comic Con, mm -hmm. those big ones, uh, SuperCon in Miami. That's like four days. Um, I go up and down the East Coast. Um, Are you involved with, I, okay, I have to ask you, are you involved with Comic-Con in Baltimore? Uh, the Baltimore, yes. Do you, know Brad, do you know Brad Tree by any chance? Uh, I met him because he, and I only meet him once because he pays me. I've worked with Brad for 20 years. Um, I haven't been down to Baltimore for at least four years. Because um, okay. I, I, I know Brad is very involved with Baltimore Comic-Con. Yeah, um, I go down to Baltimore twice because they used to have Barony gone, which was a weird thing, but hey, whatever. <laughs> and then I go down there for Baltimore Comic Con. Um, actually, that's how I actually started. Um, I started here in Granite State Comic Con, then 